Hello, welcome to another episode of The Breakaway where we talk about all things bolts. I'm Evan Klosky, that is David Sheely and David tonight. Feels like the fork in the road type of game for this Lightning team. Dude, they have got to get a win. You are exactly right. There is zero margin for error. Now, coming up today, we're going to talk about the big trade made before the deadline, the Bolt Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Plus, we have a great special guest, Deandra Liu from Hockey Sports News, is joining us to give her opinion about how the team can make their seven straight postseason appearance. All right, so let's jump right into the Lightning round, and Tampa Bay takes on Philadelphia tonight. The last time these two teams played, the power went out. The Flyers have been soft sellers at the deadline, but they have two more points than the Bolts. So let's say Philly gets thrown into the wild card mix here. It is imperative Tampa Bay keeps pace with them heading into April. With 18 games left in the season, the Bolts have nine home games left. Usually, they're one of the best teams in front of the hometown crowd, but that mojo is gone right now. Tampa Bay has not won in regulation inside Amelie Arena in three weeks. In their last six home games, the Bolts have three points. John Cooper called Thursday's game against Calgary embarrassing and inexcusable Evan. So help was on the way. Of course, Julian Brisbois could not help himself during that third period of the game against the Flames. The Bolts ship prospect Jack Thompson and a third round pick to the Sharks for forward Anthony Duclair and a 2025 seventh round pick next year. Now because of this, the Bolts do not have a pick in the NHL draft this summer until round number five. On top of that deal, the team also acquired Matt Dumba from Phoenix for a 2027 fifth rounder. So the Bolts attack two needs, scoring depth and defense. Breeze Boys, he's had a clear message to both guys when he called them and it's go time. As the playoffs have started. Like you're going to come in and it's going to be a playoff atmosphere and you're going to play big games starting tomorrow night. Uh, both guys enjoy big games, usually uh, step up in big games and are looking forward to the challenge and they're going to make us better as we are making this push to get into the playoffs right now. It's now or never for the Bolts who are not in control of their own destiny. The Islanders have two games in hand and the Capitals have three games in hand. The good news is Tampa Bay has a better strength of schedule than all of these teams, but that does not guarantee anything. More help is on the way though. Besides Duclair and Dumba, last year's big trade acquisition Tanner Janot should come off the shelf soon. Cooper hinted Janot might come back as early as Thursday. He's played a total of four games in 2024 and while Janot only has 12 points in 42 games, he provides added depth and muscle on the ice. Should help out on the four check as well, Evan. All right, so let's do a line change. David is off the mic. We got DeAndre Liu on it. And DeAndre covers the lightning for the hockey news. She does a bunch of things, also part of the Professional <laughs> Hockey Writers Association. We appreciate you coming on, talking some bolts with us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. All right, so first question, we talked about the trades for Dumba, Duclair. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on this moves as it pertains to the Lightning making a playoff push here? Honestly, these are the two areas where they needed some help, right? Depth scoring and defense. Um, so Matt Dumba, I think uh, that one came, you know, right before the deadline. Everybody was pretty excited to see that come in, right? So my biggest thing with Dumba is, you know, you lose a guy like Sergachev, right? And, and he's on the ice a lot. Matt Dumba's averaging 20 plus minutes of ice time per game. They need that, 150 hits uh, so far this season. They need the help. They need the help. It's been an up and down season, uh, we know defensively, and um, this was a big move. And you know, we I, I was there, and uh, it came in right at the deadline. So yeah. it was there was a need there for sure. And then they also get Duclair, who I mean is quite a speedster and hopefully can can help out a little bit, yeah. right? Yeah, no, I, I am excited about Duclair coming, and uh, I remember when the Lightning had to play him in, uh, the, I think, 2021 playoffs, yeah. and it wasn't it wasn't fun, so no. I think having him on uh, on the Lightning side is, is a good thing. Yeah, Julian said it's better to have him on our side <laughs> yeah. than someone else's side, and someone who, who didn't have a good time with Duclair was Nikita Kucherov, yeah. and we had Chris Cren on last week. He built a case for Cooch to win the Hart Trophy. It's going to be tough for him to win it without making the playoffs. But when you look at the discrepancy in points between him and the rest of his teammates, where can this team find some offense? We're not used to this team being in a struggle yeah. town and scoring goals. Yeah, no, and, and I'm hoping, you know, sometimes they you need some new guys, you throw them in there and they can kind of get back in their flow. But again, yeah, it's been, it's been an up and down season and, um, Kucherov is in a, a world of his own, and uh, I'm not surprised by that. You know, we've seen, uh, you know, the playoffs ended. They they took that loss to Toronto, and he took it to heart, and he has been on the ice since May of this past year. So It certainly shows when you see these numbers here just completely outclassing everybody on this team. And Braden Point's not having a bad year. Neither is Hedy. Hagel's been phenomenal five-on-five -five play, but 
106 points to 65 from Braden Point. That's, man, that's a wild difference versus what we're seeing in Colorado with McKinnon. Yeah. Uh, Connor McDavid certainly in, in Edmonton has dry sidle, so. And I think that just helps his case in the Hart mm -hmm. uh, Trophy. I mean, he, he's, he's factoring in 50% of their goals uh, for the Lightning so far this season. So uh, like Chris Cran mentioned, I mean, it's, it's a no brainer for me. I've been this way the entire season <laughs> and uh, hopefully the rest of the league catches on. Yeah, now hopefully the Bolts catch on as well. During this final 18 game stretch, what do you want to see from this team so that we're talking come April that, hey, they're playing a postseason game here? Evan, it's all about defense. Um, <laughs> when you look at the score and, and, you know, you look at the games where they're most successful, where they were able to pull off a win, uh, they're letting up, you know, one, two goals, right? So it all comes down to defense. And when I think of the Lightning in their prime, when they won the Stanley Cup, it all came down to defense, right? So I think that the, the key to that is to get back to playing solid defense. And again, maybe bringing in a couple new pieces, it'll kind of change the flow and, and, and break things up. And, uh, you know, they've, they've got a chance to do it, so. Yeah, so we will see. I mean, again, tonight is a biggie because okay. if you don't beat the Flyers on home ice with all of this happening behind you, yeah. it's gonna be really tough entering the West Coast trip that's coming up next week. Yeah. Again, DeAndre Lou, thank you so much for being with us. And you know what, David? Luckily, this team had something to smile about yesterday, right? Yeah, they did. Luckily for the Bolts, they had plenty of reasons to smile after that Flames game because Friday night, the team inducted its newest members to the Tampa Bay Lightning Hall of Fame. Brad Richards and Dave Andrzejczyk, two pivotal pieces to the first Stanley Cup victory. They were enshrined next to the inaugural class of fellow teammates such as Marty St. Louis, Vinny LeCavalier, and the reason we even have this show, Phil Esposito. The ceremony was held inside Amelie Arena, and it's a night where the most influential people in franchise history come out. You know, you think of my career, I, I spent four and a half years here, uh, so it wasn't long. We did some really good things during those four and a half years, but uh, I, I'm extremely honored, and you know, this is a great tradition they've started, uh, you know, last year with Marty, Vinny, and Espo, and, and there's lots of great players in this, in this, in this that have gone through this organization that will get their due, and, and uh, but uh, it's going to be a great weekend. All right, time to give out our three stars before we wrap this show up. And number three, Max Anderson in the Minnesota High School playoffs not only scores but then delivers an amazing oh, celly using his equipment. Look at from that. A, that's a selfie stick down the ice. Evan, his teammates even get involved. We need more goal celebrations at the NHL level. That see, that's an all-timer right yeah, there. I like get, that. He gets an extra point for the celly right Absolutely. there. I'm with you. All right. Second star, former Bolt Stanley Cup winner David Savard scored the funkiest goal of his career this week against the Predators. He plays knock hockey with the boards. And can you even blame the goalie here? What is this? You know, I, I don't know what you're supposed to do. I remember Eric Chernak scoring a goal like this a few years ago in St. Louis. Uh, it's not that it's, it, this hasn't happened before. Right. But when it does happen, it's super crazy, and that is one lucky way to score a goal, and that helped them win the game. Oh, my goodness, man. A puck lies. A basketball doesn't remember that. <laughs> Our top star is John Cooper after his sixth annual Coop's Catch for Kids event this week. He even had the great one, Wayne Gretzky, joining in the festivities. The event is where fishing meets fundraising for pediatric cancer research. Since 2016, Cooper has raised north of $750,000, and this day out on the boats for the kids is an afternoon circled on the calendar every year. For the players. Yeah, we're super excited to be a part of this. We said Coop has done a great job with this uh, tournament for I don't know how many years, but it uh, feels to get uh, bigger and bigger and raise even more money, so um, it's phenomenal. Yeah, we are so thankful to have Coop in our community and everything he does for pediatric cancer research. We believe Hayden Fleury was actually the big winner from that, that uh, Bolts Day on, on the water, stick taps to Coop. Uh, David, after a 2 and all opening week, he picked the Flames, and that was the big difference in our first iteration of the standings. So, so you get to start with the predictions this yeah. week. So, all right, here's what I've got. I'm going to pick the Bolts to right the ship against Philly. I think both teams, you know, they're a bit evenly matched. And, and listen, the Lightning, they got, they got something in their belly, right? Mm -hmm. They got a fire in their belly because, I mean, they got embarrassed by Calgary. But, ooh, those Rangers are good. Yeah, yeah, and I think New York's going to come down and handle business. I got I to gotta give it to the Rangers. So I'm actually agreeing with you this week. It's very boring. Uh, expecting an angry bunch tonight. And then this team just, uh, they stink against New York. I don't know what else to tell you. In the regular season, they just don't beat them. Uh, they have not beaten the Rangers in regulation since 2019. Ooh. So I got to go with New York until they prove otherwise. So, you know, 
We'll see. We'll be gladly wrong, right? Oh, but we, we will be, yeah. We, we appreciate you sticking with us for another episode of The Breakaway Show. Once again, thank you to Deandra, who's over there sitting down here in studio. Uh, we appreciate her. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. That is David Sheely. <laughs> I'm Evan Klosky. This is The Breakaway. Puck drops tonight at 7 o'clock. We got more bright side coming up after the break.